I'm sorry about that. My phone told me I had reached my maximum recording time. So I'm going to have to do this in two parts. <laughs> I apologize. It just stopped on me. I didn't expect that. Apparently 33 minutes and 10 seconds is as long as it'll let me go. That's fine. So, we have our thread right here. And we have our dress right here. Now we have to thread the needle again. So, pick my needle back up. We're going to do the same process all over again. Take my needle threader. Dig it through the little hole. Which is sometimes easier said than done. Sometimes I get it right away on the first try. Sometimes I have to work at it. And like I was saying, this is a new a new little spool. And I buy these little kits. They come with all these different colors. And I've never used this one. So the last piece of thread is always stuck through. There's a little cut right here. And you pull it through like this. And it frees it up. And then you can unwind it just like that. And again, I always like to give myself extra just in case. I get my little my little snippets, <laughs> my little scissors. And I'll cut. And if you want to, after you've cut it, you can put it back around that little cut piece and that way it won't unroll in the box with everything else because somehow I think little gremlins or something get in there and they unwind my thread and it all gets tangled up. I actually have several rolls in there. I have several spools in there right now that have, a lot of the thread has come undone. So once again, put the thread through the needle threader, pull it through a little bit. So now it's through there. You grab your needle, hold this, pull, and it comes through. Very easy way to thread a needle. And I'm going to double it over again, which means I'm going to take that piece of thread and thread it through the needle like that until it's about the same length on both sides. Doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't matter. And I kind of smooth it out. Smooth it with my fingers. Like this. Okay. Now I'm right-handed, so I'm going to I use my right hand, come back to this strap, and make sure you're working on the one you want to work on. I'm going to fold it over like this. So it's like a little Z. Now, I'm going to turn it where I can work on it. And hold it straight. And make sure you position it. You know, I always say measure twice, cut once. Well, that kind of applies to sewing too. You want to make sure you Got it nice and lined up before you start. Or you could have to redo the whole thing. It's just not always fun. So I'm doing it. I start from going in on the underside of this strap, not the top. I pull my needle through. My thread's got a little snarl, but that's okay. Now, back down. Try not to poke your finger, but you will, I can tell you. If you don't sew much, um, you will eventually poke yourself with the needle. And you probably do it many times in your life, but you just learn to roll with it and not worry about it too much. You, like I said, you just say, dang it, and then move on. No big deal. You push down. Making sure that your thread under here it doesn't get tangled. Okay, and pull it through like that. Now I have three. You can see where I went over three times. One, two, three. And you can do it any way you want to. You can do as many times as you feel you need to. There's really no right or wrong way to do it. Right. Just whatever works. And again, this, I would be a little more worried about how this looks, except I know, uh, you know I'm probably going to wear it most of the time at work.
part and I will have something over it so you're not even going to see this part. So I'm not terribly concerned about how straight these are, these little stitches. I'm, I'm not really worried about it. Alright, so that's nice and secure like that. Now hopefully this strap will come up higher and that gap open in the front like it did and I won't have to constantly use dress tape because dress tape does not feel good to pull off your skin at the end of the day. I can promise you that. It's not comfortable. And my thread got bound up because I was not paying attention. Oops. That sure did. I got it all wound up in there. Hmm. Bummer. Well, you won't worry over it too much. Got one piece. Let's see if I can get the other one. You can use these needles for all kinds of things. Come on now. You can do it. Maybe not. Okay, we'll just leave it there. Let's set my needle down. Grab the thread. And I'm going to do like I did before. Try to tie a knot. Sometimes it doesn't cooperate, which is fine. You just fight with it until you get it to work. Like wrestling with a greased pig. Okie dokie. And this piece over here, again, I'm not going to worry about too much. I'll just trim it off where it doesn't show. As long as it's secured down, it's fine. I just don't want it to come untied. Alright. Now I'm going to take my little pieces of thread off. And put them on my lid where I showed you. See, now I have a black thread and a brown thread all kept together so I don't have pieces of thread all over the place. Alright, let's see how it looks. Well, it's definitely shorter. I might have actually made it a bit too short, but if I did, it's no big deal. I'll just, you know, not make this so big. Actually, it probably is too big now that I look at it, but it's okay. I mean, you saw how quickly I did that. I can fix it again in five minutes, no problem. And I'm actually going slow because I'm doing this for a video and I'm not doing it the way I would in any normal life. So, I'll try this on and we'll see how it works. And if it doesn't work, I'll just fix it and try again. So, those were my two dresses. Okay. Hopefully I can add these two videos together and not end up with two videos split in half. But one other thing I wanted to show you, like I mentioned, is how to sew on a button. It's, it's something that I think everybody should know how to do. Um, it's very simple. It just takes a little practice. And the more you practice at it, the better you'll get. Yeah, you'll probably poke yourself with a needle at least once. It's okay. You just say, dang it, and you'll just move on. Um, I have here just an old washcloth. Just an old one that, you know, it's just all faded. And, you know, if I poke holes in it with a needle, it doesn't matter. And I will undo it. After I do it, I'll take the button out. But we're going to pretend that this is a shirt or a pair of pants or just whatever. Whatever item needs a button. We'll just pretend that that's what this is. And that's how my mom taught me. She just gave me a, an old rag or something that had me practice sewing buttons on it. And she would show me, you know, she would mark spots with a marker or something and show me where she wanted me to sew the buttons so I could learn to put them in exactly the right place. And uh, I've used that many, many times. I've had to sew on a whole lot of buttons. Hey, this is a shirt. I sew a lot of buttons on shirts. If you're lucky, the shirt came with extra buttons, so you don't have to go hunting down a button. Sometimes they don't. Uh, and that's
that's when you need to have a button collection. Fortunately, I have a button collection, and I'll show it to you. It is in this container. And yes, this is also a food container. It just works best for my buttons. And I'll take the top off. And in here, I have all kinds of buttons. I have buttons for every occasion. These are some that I bought, and I don't even remember. I think it was for a sweater, and I thought I was going to need three, but I ended up only needing one. But I kept them, because you never know. They might come in handy sometime. And in here I have all kinds of things. I have big buttons, little buttons, gigantic, freaky-looking buttons. <laughs> I have quite a collection of buttons. I even have these little wooden doohickeys. I don't know. You never know. I have them in all colors. There's a ladybug button. I have several of those in here. I think there's one. Uh, there's a coat button right here. Uh, I just... Everything you can imagine. So... When you have to sew, so we're going to sew a button on our shirt. Well, the first thing you need to do after you get your buttons, you look at the shirt and you want to see what kind of buttons it has on it. And then you come back to your buttons and you try to find one that, that matches that as closely as you can. If you're really concerned about it and you can't find a button that matches, you can always go to a fabric store or craft store or even, um, uh, Target or Walmart have sections where you can find stuff like this. You could go there and uh, try to, you know, take the garment with you so you'll know what you're looking for. And you can find, hopefully, a button that will match. And you can just buy the button. These are really trippy buttons. I don't know where these came from. These are wild. I don't, I don't know why I would ever need those. <laughs> I've been working on this collection for years. I've been, you know, I just save buttons. And pick them up here, there, and yonder, and put them in here. So, let's say, let's say the buttons on this shirt are a pretty standard looking button would be a little button about, let's say it's about this size, right here. But we're not going to use this for an example. What we'll say is about this big and kind of a, like a pearly white. Well, not that drastic, but yeah, like this. No, that's got, that's not what I wanted either. No, we'll go with this. Okay. Sort of a, sort of a tortoise shell looking button like that. That's pretty common. Like that. Okay, so, so your, your shirt has buttons like that. Well, you're in luck because you found one in your button collection. Good. That's great. And you can look around. If it's not exact, it's okay. You can look through the rest of your buttons. See if you can find one that matches better. So we look through our buttons. Yeah, no, nothing, nothing is, is better. But that's cool. Yeah, it's okay. The one we found is good enough, and it's not really going to be obvious. You know, it's not going to stand out as being totally different. So, we're going to put our buttons back so we don't lose any of them lid back on because now that we have our, our button we shouldn't need this anymore. Alright. Now we have to do is figure out where it goes on the shirt. Oh, and one other thing. Uh, make sure the button will fit through the buttonhole. If it's a little bit too big you might have trouble getting it through and if it's a little bit too small it might not stay through the buttonhole. It might slip out. So try to make sure it's not only the color or the texture or the shape, but also the size. Make sure it's not too big, not too small. It's kind of like, you know, Goldilocks and Three Bears. You want to be just right. So, then you figure out where to sew it on so it will line up with the buttonhole and it will work. Okay. I'm going to take my washcloth, smooth it out a little bit. It's going to fold it up for a while. And we're going to slide it over. And we're going to pretend that this, this is the corner where the buttons are on the shirt. And we're going to 
to say, I'm going to say that that little crease right there, that's where the button should go, right here. So, there. Now you have to figure out what kind of thread you're going to use. So, you look at the other buttons and you look at the kind of thread that they used on the buttons. Let's say for this shirt, they used white. Okay? So, you would come to your thread box and put all my options back in it. You would go to your thread box and say, okay, white, no problem. I have two whites. I actually like using this one for um, buttons. It's made of, uh, what's it made of? Let's see. It is spun something. Sim, sim tat. I'm not sure I'm trying to read it. Um, it's kind of hard to read. There we go. It was made in Sweden. Um, it's white. But it just seems to be, this thread seems to be a little stronger than some of my other white thread. So this is the one I usually use. If I need white thread to sew on the button, this is what I use. Alright, good. So we got her. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. And in real life, it'll go faster than this because in real life, I don't explain everything. I just... I'd already have that button sewn on by now. And I would have moved on to whatever other thing I needed to do. Alright. Got our thread. And pick up the needle again. And once again, here we come with the needle threader through the eye. Right there. Okay. And get our thread. And we're going to double up this too, just like on the, uh, the dresses. We want that thing to stay on. We don't want it to fall off again. And you find your scissors, which I have buried under spools of thread. <laughs> Actually, I think I, nope, they're under my imaginary shirt. Okay. So, cut my thread. Right here. There we go. We put the thread to the side. Lay the scissors down. And we're going to thread our needle again. Pull it through. And then you pull the needle threader through. Just like that. And you set your needle threader to the side. We're going to double it up. Make them the, roughly the same length. You can see. Hopefully. And you can't even twist it. You can twist the needle and smooth it down like that. Helps keep the pieces together. A little better. Alright. Now, you got your button where you want it. Make sure you keep an eye on that spot right here. Make sure that you know. Right there. Okay. Now, you pick up your shirt. And you're going to kind of tuck your hand under like this and hold it tight. To begin with, we're not going to keep it tight. And for now, we are. Start again on the underside, just like with the dresses. You kind of have to poke around a little bit to find a way through the button. Or I do. There may be a better way to do this, but if there is, I don't know. But don't worry about it. And yes, you will poke your thumb with the needle. So that's why thimbles were invented, I guess. All right, I got it through. Pull it. Now watch that thread. Don't let it come all the way through. That's good. Now, you can either do your thread in an X pattern, where you go from this hole to this hole, and that hole to this hole, or you can do it in a square. I think we'll do this one in an X pattern. But look at the other buttons on the shirt or the shorts or pants or whatever you're putting a button on. See how they did the other ones and just do it the same way they did it. Just to be consistent. So I'm going to take it down diagonally now. And you see my thread. And we'll come back up through. Whatever hole you come up through. down diagonally. Now here, once we get to this part, and we pulled it down twice, once you get to this point, check it again, make sure it's where you want it to be. Alright, it's where I want it. Now, you don't want this button so tight on your shirt that you can't get it through the 
Oh, we want to give it a little wiggle room. So you just take it and wiggle it a little bit. So it's not just absolutely tight, tight, tight on the, on the shirt. Just wiggle it a little and give it a little space. Give it a little bit of thread so it can move a little bit. And you just keep going. And as you do, you know, you might just wiggle it occasionally to loosen it up a little bit. And you can do it as many times as you like. You just keep going like that. So now we have this lovely little X. And that button is nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. And here's what it looks like on the underside. Pick that out there. All right. Once you're done, once you have it, you've you know, fastened it on as tight as you want it, we're going to do it just like we did the dresses. We take one end of the string, the thread. This is the end. And here's the part with the needle. You can go ahead and cut this off if you want to, if you're afraid you're going to poke yourself, but I don't. I mean, I've, I have sewn on literally hundreds of buttons. I, you know, I, I could do this in my sleep. I don't poke myself to this. Uh, but you can. It doesn't matter. You can do it however you want. It's your shirt. You do it however you see fit. So, my button's on. It's where I want it. It's got a little give to it, so I can get it in that buttonhole, and then it will stay. And it looks lovely. Just like that. Once you're done tying it off, take your scissors. And cut the thread. Just cut the ends off. Like that. And you take your thread, pull it out, and I'll put it with the rest of my thread on the top of my sewing box. So I've got blue, I got white, I got black. And then when I'm ready, I just gather it all up and throw it in the trash. And put everything back. So my needle goes back in its little spot. So that I know where it is next time. I take my needle threader. And I take my scissors and put them all back in the box, which is right here. And back in they go. And don't forget this. Okay. Like that. This all goes in the trash. You can check around, make sure you've had all your stuff, you didn't leave any needles lying around. ready for next time. And you got your pretty button. <laughs> and the more you practice, the better you'll get. I think this is a good thing to teach kids how to do. I do want to say that when I went off to college, um, there were a lot of girls at my dorm. We're talking 18-year-old people. And, and I'm not just saying only girls should know this. I will teach both my sons how to do this because this is something you'll use forever. I cannot tell you how many girls in my dorm did not have the slightest idea how to sew on a button. And I taught probably four or five different girls how to sew on a button. It's not hard, but they just, they were afraid to try. They didn't have any, anything with them. They didn't have any thread or needles or anything. So I showed them all what to do and told them to go out there when they first could at Target or wherever and get a little sewing kit to keep with them. I even keep an emergency sewing kit in the glove compartment of my car because you just never know. A button could pop off your shirt on the way to work. So you want to fix it? No problem. But this is something I think everybody should teach their kids how to do. I will definitely teach my boys how to sew on a button and fix just little minor things like what I did with my dresses and uh, it could save them a lot of money instead of going somewhere to pay somebody to do it you just do it yourself so I'm going to put away my washcloth I hope I remember to take the button off I'll do that later okay but 
Thank you very much for watching my video, and hopefully I can figure out how to put these two videos together into one. We'll see. I hope you have a wonderful day. I will be back again. Probably the next thing I'll do is read some Dr. Seuss next time, unless I think of something else, which is entirely possible. Thank you very much for watching my video, and I hope you learned something from it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it.